gone through the whole process of developing the sense of being a confident, capable leader. How many of you want to be leaders? Okay. What do you think is more important, being liked or being a leader? In my career as a female army officer, there were definitely people that wanted to challenge me. When I had one non-commissioned officer, the first time I met him, told me that his goal while I was his supervisor was to make me cry. And every chance he had, he would push my buttons to see if he could break me. And so he actually made me stronger and never made me cry. Girl Smarts is a series of workshops that works to empower fourth and fifth grade girls with strategies and skills. So when they go into more stressful situations in middle schools, they have tools in their toolkit that they can reach into to navigate those challenges. Every time you give a girl a skill to step outside of her comfort zone, you've increased her comfort zone. My dad was pretty typical of the men of his time. He had served in World War II. He also didn't go past sixth grade growing up, as far as his education. Still one of the smartest men I've ever met, though. I knew we didn't have the money to actually put me through college. So my parents weren't involved in that at all. It was really outside of their comfort zone. When I signed on as an ROTC cadet, then I had a certain obligation that I had to repay the military in order to get the scholarship dollars. I was drawn toward military intelligence, especially with my political science background. That's what I wanted to pursue. In the 1980s, women were coming into a lot of different roles that they hadn't experienced before. We were all pushing to stand up for ourselves. We were really the experimental group of women coming in to actively train side by side with the men and to pursue military roles from an equality um, perspective. In 2001, my husband was in the Pentagon. I was working in office in the Defense Intelligence Agency. It was obvious that once the towers came down and the Pentagon was hit, that our world was gonna change and that we were imminently going to be deployed. So I was pregnant with my fourth son at that time and we decided that I was going to leave active duty and retire and stay home and take care of the boys. When my boys were in middle school, my number two son, Sam, came home and he was really disturbed by the crash in confidence that he saw his female friends experiencing. That's when he said to me flat out, Mom, you need to do something. As I went through my research, I found statistics that said that a girl's self-confidence peaks when she's nine years old. So I wanted to get into that decision cycle. How many of you have been to every single workshop over the last two years? Good. Fourth graders sign up for the five workshops throughout the year that support the building of skills. Everything from how to do a proper handshake to how to make values-based decisions. In your group, I want you to identify the primary leader that's going to come up and talk to me. If the girls are in fifth grade, then they would learn how to set goals and how to achieve their goals how to communicate effectively, and how to negotiate conflict with friends. Honestly, the business side of this is not the driver for me personally. I'm very thankful that I have a pension. My husband has a very good job. This is the kind of business that needs to be driven by your heart. Okay, keep that strong handshake when you go up to meet somebody. Show them that you're there and that you mean business. Okay. 
When you can teach a girl how to say no and stand up against something that she doesn't want to experience, then you really have given them an opportunity to take control of who they are and not just be a reflection of who someone else is. All right, good. Let's go get them, girls. Bye, guys. Bye. Love having you. Bye, ladies. Oh, you guys are making me so happy.